say, who shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, here I am. Send me on. Please be seated.
We begin our worship today by giving you thanks. Your love endures forever. It never fails. Though there are many ways in which we have failed, we have not exceeded the supply of your mercy and grace. As we worship you today, may it be a joyful sound to your ears. We ask that your Holy Spirit would be at work, opening our ears to hear and our hearts to receive your word. May we be transformed into your likeness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome to Mission Emphasis Sunday, one of our annual events. We're so glad you're here. If you're joining us online, welcome. And please let us know if you're watching online. We started out yesterday with a yard sale, and Caleb headed that up and had a lot of help. And thank you for all the volunteers and donated things. They raised $1,700 for the mission in Bear Cruz. <laughs> want to invite you on February the 17th to a chilly night. That's a Wednesday night at 6 p.m. You don't have to bring anything. Just bring a friend and come and join us. We'll begin our pictorial directory pictures that night. And so we'll be signing you up for that. And that will begin on the 17th and go until the 20th. So please come and have your picture made for the next directory. There's a youth night on the 21st from 5 to 7 p.m. And of course, we're, we're talking about the golf tournament. That's our next big mission activity. So please help us out with the golf tournament if you can. And thank you to all of you who've been participating with that. We're glad you're here this morning, and we've come today to worship God and celebrate the, the work that we're doing around the world. So let's continue with that. Thank you. 
boxes that we gathered for the children of faith ministry, 140 Christmas boxes, the mission run raised $1,000, the uh, 
yard sale that we just had, $1,700. And you can see the table out there filled with cleaning supplies. I mean, every time something is suggested or a mission for this church, I mean, we really stand up. So I think our heart is definitely in the right place. As our mission emphasis Sunday is here, we need to celebrate our call as a congregation of believers to be blessed to be a participant in the mission outreach here at Central Christian. As a member of our mission committee, I can tell you we are excited about this day, a day when we focus on our missions and we look forward to the year ahead. We need to realize that we'll never complete the task of spreading the gospel message through our missions. However, we need to keep striving to do our best. Today, remember that why we, that we still have work to do, that the Holy Spirit is always at work. Wherever we may go, whatever we do, the Spirit has already been there and will remain long after <coughs> after this day. In John 14, we are told that Jesus will never leave us, that the Father, on his request, will send the Spirit. Today, offer a prayer of thanks for your role in personally supporting the missions of Central Christian Church as we spread the gospel and the being an instrument will be used by the Holy Spirit. Ask God how you might be called to further support the missions as you carry his good name through the rest of the year. In Christianity, the Great Commission is the instruction of the resurrected Jesus Christ to his disciples to spread the gospel to all the nations of the world. The most famous version of the Great Commission is in Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20, where on a mountain in Galilee, Jesus calls on his followers to make disciples and to baptize all nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, and therefore make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. What a blessing for us here at Central Christian Church to be a small part of this through the missions that we support and to celebrate communion each week in the remembrance of our Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Father God, we pray for the missions we support and those who have been called to facilitate them. We also pray for the missionaries all over the world. We ask that you help them remain faithful to the call that you have given them. Lord, we pray when they feel like giving up, that you will grant them your strength and desire to carry on. Lord, we pray for this loaf and cup and give you thanks and praise for your son and his precious name. Amen. Uh, you can come forward uh, one uh, row at a time and be careful with the social distancing. You may come.
this time of the service, it's an opportunity for us to give back just a portion of what God has blessed us with. So many blessings in our life, financially, health-wise, for family, the blessings are just so many. You can give as you've gone out the doors. We'll have uh, someone at the doors collect yeah, uh, your offering and also online. Uh, it's, it's made very easy uh, online for those that are uh, not able to come in person. Let us pray for the offering. Gracious Father, we pray on behalf of our missionary friends. They are dependent upon the offerings and support of others. Lord, we pray you grow the financial support for them and their mission within our church so we can provide more of a financial blessing on them. Bless and multiply these gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Good morning. It's my privilege to stand in for our brother and sister, Derek and Jana, who are in the, almost the end of their quarantine, so we look forward to seeing you guys back here soon. Um, but this morning, I get to introduce our guest speaker, Con Mismanos, with my hand. Well, Michelle P. Zunica uh, graduated from Ozark Bible, Bible College in 2003 uh, and uh, didn't have a plan. You know, that's so unusual for a college student out of graduation not to have a plan. Uh, she did have a calling. It was to serve the Lord uh, on the borders and on the Mexican side. She didn't know what she was going to do. She just felt drawn to it. And so she moved here to Brownsville. She actually lived with one of our church families for a few months to kind of get the lay of the land and figure out what she was going to do. But even though she didn't have a plan, God had a plan. He took a young lady with a desire to serve and put her in a mission to teach deaf children in Matamoros. Now, particularly back then, but even today, you know that the culture in Mexico has a stigma attached to handicaps. Well, deafness is just like all the other handicaps, and so these kids really needed help. So what did God do? got a young lady that didn't know how to speak Spanish, nor did she know sign language. Uh, however, she was able to learn that. She was a good study. She started out with a few kids doing education. Uh, she met her husband, who was in the same church that she was attending, and they were married in 2008. Uh, and Julie Zunica uh, came on board and started working side by side with her as they grew the ministry. The ministry now uh, not only teaches kids and some young adults, uh, but they also house some, some young adults or some children uh, that need homes as well. Uh, I believe they're serving over 40 kids at this particular time uh, and are doing great works right here in Matamoros. And all of us can be proud to be a part of that mission and all the missions we support around the world. Michelle, we look forward to your visit this morning. Thank you, Brother Houston, for that really nice introduction. Um, one small correction. I did have a plan. It just wasn't this. <laughs> <laughs> so my plan, when I graduated I, uh, college, I started grad school. And I had, um, I had studied American Sign Language at Ozark Christian College. And my plan was to counsel deaf teens in America um, because that was an area that I felt God had called me to. I didn't see Mexico on my planning book, nor did I see missions. So um, that was definitely the work of God from the very beginning. So I am so pleased and honored um, that you have all asked me to come speak today and give you a small update about what God is doing um, here at the border in Matamoros among the deaf population. So, as was explained, um, my husband and I run Comis Manos Deaf Ministry. It was started in February of 2003 when I arrived here. My plan um, when I came was to stay for three months, 
to survey the area, the need, and then let the missionaries come down and they were gonna start the ministry. So um, about six weeks into my three month commitment, there were no missionaries coming. And God decided to update me on his plan. So um, my original commitment to stay was for three months and next weekend I celebrate 18 years here. So um, I'm so thankful. <laughs> follow behind God's leading as, as closely as possible um, and he picks us up when we make mistakes and he guides us and directs us along the way so I'm so thankful for that. Comis Manos is God's ministry um, and we're just privileged to serve here with him um, and what he's doing. Before I tell you about what Comis Manos does, I'm going to explain a little bit about why. Why is it needed to have a deaf ministry? So a few of the misconceptions about working with the deaf population are just generalized, kind of um, worldwide. So one of the, the biggest problems that the deaf community faces is just lack of connection. And that lack of connection is due to lack of communication. So when a deaf person is born into their family, 90% of the time, they are born into a family that has never had a deaf family member. So only 10% of deaf children are born into families with deafness in the family. Um, it is not largely a hereditary disability. So when a child is born into a home that has no um, reference point to work with deafness, a lot of times the parents, with good intentions and a good heart, want to reach their child just simply don't have the tools or understanding of how to do that. We're blessed in America um, over the last 200 years to have a lot of emphasis on deaf education and assistance and early intervention to equip families. Sadly, in the rest of the world, it's very rare, including right across the border here in Matamoros, very rare to find support and information for a deaf child who is born into a family who has no idea what to do with that child. Some misconceptions about deafness is, um, and maybe you all have heard a little, a few of these things, um, that a lot of people believe that sign language is universal, and that is actually not true. Um, the sign language that I studied and my student loans showed I was paid for uh, was American Sign Language. However, when I came here, um, as Brother Houston explained, I did not speak Spanish. I don't come from a Hispanic home. I'm actually from Northern, Northeast Ohio, um, no Spanish, and I did not know Mexican Sign Language. I know American Sign Language, and it's not the same. So um, some people ask, why is it different? Well, it goes back to the Tower of Babel, honestly, and why are all of our languages different? So sign language, just like spoken language, is dependent on the culture and the country that, that you live in. Um, sadly, Mexican sign language is not even related to spoken Spanish. So um, Mexican sign language was formed through the language used in France. There's a lot of um, educational struggles because deaf people in Mexico are not naturally taught or understanding that spoken and written Spanish is not as easy for them to learn as Mexican Sign Language. So the language that we use at Comis Manos is Mexican Sign Language. In Spanish, is Lengua de Señas Mexicana, or LSM. And that language was no, um, recognized in the country of Mexico as an official language in 2005. Now in America, sign language was recognized in the early 1800s, and Mexico just in 2005. So if you can see, we're, we're a little behind. So um, unfortunately, due to the lack of understanding, um, most deaf people in the country of Mexico grow up without even basic education. Now when I mean basic education, I'm not particularly meaning reading, writing, and arithmetic. I'm speaking of knowing their name understanding that they have a name, 
Understanding that their name is different than someone else's name. Understanding that they have a birthday. Now we think, well, what's wrong with them? Why in the world would they not understand? Who told them? Who explained it to them? If they're unable to hear and they depend solely on their eyes, if it's not visually presented to them in any way, how will they learn? So, when God called Connie's Mamas into existence back in 2003, the reason in the heart of the ministry, the reason that it's needed, is to break some of these stereotypes. Not only to give hope to the families that their child is not demon-possessed, not a product of sin, and not um, worthless, but also to give value and meaning to the deaf individuals. Unfortunately, sometimes in society, what we don't understand, we're scared of, and what we're scared of, we kind of want to push to the side. And unfortunately, for too long, the deaf population has been a victim of that isolation. If we can't see it, then we don't have to worry about it. And if we don't have to worry about it, we certainly don't have to fix it. And so with Ponis Mamas existing in Matamoras, our goal in our heart is to say, deaf people matter, deaf people exist, but not only that, deaf people matter to the heart of God. There is a plan when a child is born deaf. It's not a sign of demon possession, and it's certainly not a mistake. God has a purpose. Sometimes parents ask me when they come to the ministry, why was my child born deaf? I understand they might be asking me for a medical reason, and I'm not a doctor, and there's a variety of reasons that children can be deaf. What I can tell them is the reason they were born deaf is because God has a plan for their life. When we talk about the Great Commission and reaching the people of the world, we hear a lot about the unreached people group. In the world, the fourth largest unreached people group is the deaf population. Altogether, in, the country, in all of the countries combined, the largest people group that's unreached, the fourth largest, are deaf individuals. When I explain that a child who is deaf, who is coming into Coney's Mamas, has the opportunity to learn and to also develop skills, what we're wanting to explain to the parents is your child has value, your child has worth, and your child has a purpose. And the best way to reach the fourth largest unreached people group in the world is through training of deaf people so that they go out and reach other deaf people. There is a purpose for deafness, and it a lot of times is to show us the power of God in ways that we can't understand. Over the years, people have asked me if there were Bible verses that have been fundamental in the forming of Comis Manos, and there are two. So I'm going to read them to you. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. God quickly showed me, a 24-year-old recent college graduate, that if he supplied the power, I supplied the weakness, and God was honored. Because what I could do if my two hands was very small, but the name of the ministry, Cornice Manos, signifies what God can do with his hands. And with his hands guiding us, he trains us to be able to reach out to others and show them what they're able to do with their hands. The second verse that was fundamental as the ministry was started was 1 Corinthians 1, 26 and 27. He says, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Me. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God choose the, chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Now, not speaking specifically about shame, but just speaking about in God's economy, how he makes his power known. When a deaf child learns to communicate, not only their basic needs, but their emotional desires and their psychological needs, they're able to understand abstract concepts, and we're able to explain to them about God, about the Holy Spirit, and about the plan for their life. 
what greater testimony for a family when their deaf teenager accepts Christ and makes a, a very clear profession of faith. If they're able to understand these concepts about their value and their purpose and about faith and about God's love and plan of salvation, it's a huge, amazing, and impactful testimony to their family members. God many times shows us that in our weakness, he is strong, and in our inability, God is able. That's one of the largest reasons that Comey's Moms exist. Not particularly to give a handout to the poor little child over there that, that has this problem, but to equip them to be impactful, powerful, and caring members of society. So real quickly, how does Comey's Moms do that? We're a four-prong ministry, and one of the areas, if you follow along with what we do, one of the areas that you'll hear us talk a lot about is education. And you might say, why so much about education? Because that's our, our cornerstone. Without understanding and communication, we're really limited. So we have a full educational program on, our, on site at our facility where we provide basically what you would find in any public school. We have reading, we have writing, we have history and geography, we have science, we have math, but we have a lot of sign language classes. Everything, again, based in Mexican sign language. Because we accept students of any age, we don't operate on this typical school schedule of grades. We have groups. So if I have a 30-year-old who doesn't know his alphabet because he just arrived, I can't put him in kindergarten. So he's in a group of other like-minded adults who came to the school after they were 15 and are needing to learn language for the first time. Each of our students are encouraged to move through their educational goals individually, independent of stress of passing to the next grade. So we have groups that go through a rotating schedule of classes through the week. One of the other areas that we spend a lot of time at Comis Manos is on job training. We want our deaf students to not only have head knowledge, but we want them to have practical skills. One of the areas that we do that is with workshops during our class days. So any day of the week, pre-COVID, you might find our stu students in classes with cooking, sewing, computers, carpentry, and handicrafts. Out in the lobby, um, there's some pictures of our ministry, and it shows a few of these kinds of classes. And then it also, I have out there a few hand bows that the girls have made. Just in the last three years, the deaf teenagers have sold over 500 handmade hair bows. Um, and that's been a skill that's practical and also useful for them, themselves to have the confidence to see that they can, in fact, have um, profitable skills. Our goal is not to have students have to live with us until they're elderly. We want them to be able to go out and become productive citizens of the community, to break stereotypes, to spread God's love, and to also show that they are capable members of their society. One of the other large areas of the ministry is in family support services. And this basically is the holistic outreach of Fumis Manos. We do everything from interpreting for government projects, um, advocating at legal meetings, um, providing medical services to our clothing pantry, food distribution, and family counseling sessions. We divide our time throughout the week in different areas according to the needs at the time. One of the ministry's upcoming projects this spring is to launch our medical clinic on the property, which will provide for um, video conferencing with American doctors who are able to meet with our students and their family members. Then the last, but certainly most important area of the ministry is in our spiritual, oops, is in our spiritual work. We work closely with our local congregation in Matamoros to provide training, um, biblical studies, Bible school, and um, interpreted church services. The reason that I'm here now without my husband is that he's actually at the church across the border 
um, providing work at the local church. But um, normally on a given Sunday, I'll be at church interpreting for the deaf population there. We have um, a great blessing of having local volunteers and, and teachers that have come on board to learn Mexican Sign Language and use their skills and trades in order to serve the deaf community. Currently, we have a staff of 11, and then we have volunteers at our local church who also assist when we are working um, on our evangelistic programs. 2020 certainly was difficult with COVID, as you all know in your lives. We had to use a lot of creative um, techniques, things that we didn't originally have planned, but we've been able, thankfully, to continue serving the deaf population even with the new standards. So most of our spiritual training and outreach has actually moved online. We have Facebook and YouTube channels that provide sermons, Bible studies, music, and um, lessons for little children in Mexican Sign Language. And the blessing of that is that we're able to reach beyond just Matamoros. The population in Matamoros of deaf individuals averages between 1,800 to 2,000 people, just in one city. It's common along the border to find large populations of disabled individuals, especially deaf community. And unfortunately, only in the large metropolitan areas of the country will you find any services for the deaf community. So if you're in Mexico City or Monterey and you're a deaf person, there's a high possibility that you've received an education. Otherwise, your destiny is silence and isolation. That's why God, in his grace and his mercy, has allowed Comis Manos to come alongside this population in this side of the country and be able to give hope and to give encouragement and to teach and then to train them because they are going to be the next generation that goes out and impacts the rest of the country. There are deaf people that are their neighbors and there are deaf people across the country that are needing what they're receiving. And so now we're excited, just like we heard with those, the children singing today about lighting their candle and going into the world, our students are able to start doing that. All that we do at Comis Manos is free of charge to the participants and their families. We depend on support from churches like Central, who for all of these years have walked beside us and made this possible. So on behalf of all of our students who can't come here to me to be with you all today, I say thank you. God bless you and thank you for believing in and trusting that God has a purpose for their lives and that Comis Manos is able to continue reaching their needs. Thank you. here and those that are, that are at home right now, reach out and touch people here and all around the world. And in one way or another, those people see the love of Christ through our efforts. Uh, I'm going to ask the mission team to come up and join me right now. We're going to say a quick prayer for each mission, and then we'll close the service off. Okay, if you bow your heads, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the fact that we're able to serve you through the use of AIDS, International Disaster and Emergency Services, that those in the world that might see help in the time of natural disaster and man-made disaster, and most importantly, even though we provide comfort and care, that Lord, they know that that comfort and care came through you, through your servants here at Central Christian. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of this ministry. Father God, I ask you to continue to, to bless faith ministries. I know they struggled so much in 2020, but as 2021 is upon us, they're still struggling to try to, uh, to get 
through this COVID uh, problems that we've had, but uh, continue to bless them and, and show them the way. And we pray this in your precious son's name. Amen. Dear Father God, we ask for special protection on the lives of those who serve in the gospel broadcast mission, the Christian's Hour radio ministry based in Alaska, Wisconsin, and for the lives of those in the locations around the world making the gospel news known. We pray for the translations of the gospel, the languages other than English. We pray that they are true to the original transcription of the Holy Word and that the meaning of and miracles recorded in the text are not altered or taken out in any way. We pray that the gospel continues to be proclaimed with fervor. We pray for the people who are reached in the region of Southeast Asia in places like Myanmar, Burma, the Philippines, India, China, and Nepal. It is no accident, Lord, but it is by your providence that we are a part of the support system of the Gospel Broadcast Mission, the Christian's Hour. Lord, we lift this ministry up in prayer right now, and we also pray that we are mindful and active in our respective mission fields here on the South Texas border with our recharging station being the Ministry of Central Christian Church. Thank you, Father God, for your love of us and for us and for the eternal salvation we have in your Son, Jesus Christ. His sacrifice makes us whole, and we thank you, God. Cleanse us now and prepare our hearts for service each day and in every hour of each day. We need you, God, and we thank you that you are always with us. In Jesus, we ask these things. Lord, I lift up Tanglewood Christian Camp. Many of us have a connection there, having sent our kids or have gone as counselors, and we know the impact that that ministry is making. We pray for the directors, those that are on the board. We pray for those that handle the daily maintenance, that do the planning and the daily work. We pray for the supporting churches. Lord, we thank you that they were able to have winter camp. And we pray that as summer approaches, that more young people will have the opportunity to go and hear about your love for them. Lord, we know that it's important as teenagers go to camp that they learn about Jesus and they talk to someone besides their parents and they see that faith model in, in others' lives. Lord, we just ask your blessing upon this ministry. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I lift up Sunlight Ministries to you in Port of Haiti. Lord, this has been a ministry that has been there for years, and we are so grateful that you've been part of this ministry. We lift up Carmen and, and her husband John and all the missionaries involved with this ministry, Lord. Protect them, keep them safe. May they continue to provide uh, for the students at the academy and the college um, a good education, an education where they learn more about you, where they can learn to be the light no matter where they are. I lift up the solar panel um, project through the Lord. Please provide the tools and the means so that they can finish this project so they can provide energy to their community. Heavenly Father, may each one here, may we remember our missionaries each and every day, not just today, Lord, but each and every day. May we encourage them through email, through cards. Lord, we know they are a long ways away, and being missionaries is very difficult. Heavenly Father, but we trust in you. We press forward. We rely on you, and we love you, dear Lord, and, and we just ask that you continue to Take care of all our missionaries, and and we just thank you for the opportunity to assist in these missions. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Gracias, Señor Jesús, por Colegio Bíblico y Family Missions Institute. Gracias, Señor, porque por más de 70 años eh, estos dos ministerios han servido para que tu evangelio eh, corra alrededor del mundo. Oramos por cada uno, Señor de los maestros en colegio bíblico, de los alumnos, eh, estos que están listos y no preparados para entregar la vida, Señor, eh, para ser misioneros o predicadores. Bendíceles y ayúdales, Señor, que tengan siempre el sustento. También, Señor, por las armas que uh, cada uno, Señor, eh, vamos a traer a ti, Señor, por medio del Evangelio. Gracias por esta iglesia, Señor, que siempre sigue teniendo ese corazón de dar las misiones. Te amamos, Señor Jesús. Te damos gracias. Amén.